Texas A&M lands four-star defensive lineman Landon Rink. And Coach Elko's ability to develop relationships is a big reason why. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while, but the Aggies land a 2025 commit in Landon Rink. Four-star defensive lineman. Immediately, we're going to get into the tape. We're going to get, in, get into his upside, what we think about him as a player. We're going to get into all of that. But the first thing I want to discuss about this is something that stood out to me immediately. Watching um, you know, videos of Rink committing, he uh, gave some interviews after and was asked about, you know, hey, what went into the process, X, Y, and Z, you know, different classic, hey, you committed, how come, questions like that. And, you know, he was asked about his relationship with Coach Elko, building that. And he, Rink said, Coach Elko, I felt the closest with of all of the head coaches, you know, that have reached out, that I was that were recruiting me. Coach Elko is building relationships. And it's a huge, huge part of why. He's going to be an elite recruiter at Texas A&M. And on top of that, you have five current commits in this 2025 class. All five from the state of Texas. Coach Elko is going to recruit this state at a high level. So, once again, we'll get into Rink as a player. But I wanted to talk about that. I think hearing, you know, obviously if Rink's committing to play for Coach Elko, he's got to like him a little bit. But what really stood out to me was hearing just, hey, I got a great relationship with Coach Elko. He's awesome. You know, that's what Rink was just saying. He, he really enjoys uh, his relationship with Coach Elko, and it, uh, that matters. Some might not think it matters. It matters. That stuff matters. It's how you build program. It's how you build a culture. That's what Coach Elko is trying to do, and hearing this stuff from recruits confirms my belief of Coach Elko is a great culture builder. He's going to be an incredible recruiter. So getting into rink as a player, defensive lineman, uh, 6'2", 280 pounds, Listed as the 312th best player in 24-7 sports composite rankings. The way I would describe Rink's game, it's pretty simple. I think he is an elite football player. I talk about this a lot with basketball. Hey, you got your athletes who can jump out of the gym, but then you got your basketball players. You know what I mean? Your guys who can dribble and get to the rim and shoot. Rink. I'm not saying he's not an athletic freak because he is. He's strong. He's powerful. But he just plays football so well. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's like – and I'm going to continue to explain what I mean by this. But, but if you aren't getting it, watch the film and you'll get what I'm saying. He just – he's always in the right spot. He always seems to make the right move. He always makes the right decision on do I go left, do I go right, do I go past this line, what am I doing? He always seems to make the right decision to be in the right spot. Um, and the pure strength he has, it was, there was just one play, and it reminded me of the blind side on his highlight tape over on um, on uh, 24-7 sports. He, Y'all know the play in the blind side where the, 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 the kid has to come in and play, uh, I guess, defensive end. The little kid, and he's kind of like shaking. You can see him shaking. And then Mike, Michael Orr blows him up. And then he, he gets back up. There was one play where uh, Rink came off the edge, and this kid, I guess he was a fullback um, or the running back, but was like, oh, goodness, and just got uh, – you could see him brace for impact and just got blown up. Um, powerful, powerful player Rink is. And the technique is incredible. 
once again, his ability, he plays he plays some interior defensive line. He plays out on the edge, uh, defensive end. Some, he, he mixes around the defensive line. And when you watch him run, you think that's a linebacker. And then you see his height and weight. You go, whoa, 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 whoa. This dude is, you know, 280 pounds. Um, he's one of those guys. Will he, will he be an early contributor? That is still to be seen. And we'll have to see what he does this year. Um, we'll have to see, you know, to – um, the growth kind of year he has this year in high school. But one thing I always say is if you're playing high school football in the state of Texas, you, you're going to be just about as ready for college competition as anybody because you're going against a lot of, you know, soon to be Division One players. Um, so this is a commit I'm really excited about. Of course, you know, he chose the Aggies over Oklahoma and Ohio State. The offer list was impressive. Last season, he had 70 tackles, 30 tackles for loss, 15 sacks, and five pass breakups. He also caught a couple passes. Another play on the highlight tape. And you might go, Andrew, who cares? He's going to be a, a defensive lineman at Texas m and that's true. What, I mean, he's able he, – he had breakaway speed to score. It was like a 50-yard touchdown. There were corners and safeties running with him, and he was able to get to the end zone. At like the 20-yard line, I was like, he's about to get wrapped up. He's going to get tackled. He's going to get tackled at the, five, at the 10. He's going to get tackled at the 13. And he just kept going, and he scored. He got hit at like the three-yard line. I was able to push through and score a touchdown. It was – he's an athletic freak, but he's also a sound football player with really good technique. Um, a kid – I mean, the offer list, once again, to reiterate that, the offer list was impressive. Texas a was not the only uh, school that wanted Rink. He was – Highly coveted. He was a, a you know player that a lot of a lot of Power Five schools wanted, and the Aggies were able to land him. Uh, coach Spencer, defensive line coach, played a huge role in this. Coach Elko. I like the way this team's recruiting, and we're getting ready to talk about Texas A and M and their 2025 recruiting class, and kind of the way that's going to look. How are we how are we doing? Where are we going from here? Who's already committed? We're going to talk about all that, but I just really like the way this kid plays in this. Speed once again, the speed, the pass rush moves. I love his ability to get off blocks. He was really efficient getting off blocks, getting to the running back. He was really efficient at getting to the quarterback in the backfield. Whether it was uh, what, what, what he used lots of different moves. Some a lot of bull rush, a lot of bull rush, a lot of swim, a lot of just hey get around somebody. Really dominant player with a lot of different moves to get to the quarterback. And that stuff matters once again. I mean, it does matter. It's something I talk about a lot, something we talked about with Nick Scorton when he committed. When you are a talented defensive lineman, you have to have a plethora of moves to get to the quarterback. If you only have one move, it's going to be pretty simple to defend that. You know what I mean? It's going to be pretty simple to say, hey, okay, I, I know how to defend that. He's got one move. He's going to bull rush. He's going to he's going to push pull. He's going to swim move. Whatever. Rink has multiple different pass rush moves, which is exciting to see. And he's a guy who I think he's not a type of guy who I think is going to walk in and, and and play a huge role. I think he's going to have to develop. I think he's going to he's going to as always come into a talented Texas a and defensive line room like we see every single season, and he's going to have to wait his turn. You know, here's the deal. Guy like DJ Hicks isn't playing the second he walks on campus. It's gonna be tough for Landon Rink, you know, to come in and play the second he walks on campus. But Rink is a talented football player that will be on the field at a large capacity at some point during his Texas A&M career. I'm very confident in that. Uh, seems like a good kid. You know, um, I love just uh, interview after after deciding to pick Texas A&M over Ohio State in, in Oklahoma. Just a lot of a lot of great stuff from Rink and. This is just a, 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 a huge addition. You haven't seen a commit in a while. Sometimes getting the commit, it spirals. You get more and more and more, and it, you know it's a snowball effect. And so hopefully this is the start of a little bit of a snowball effect. We know that July and June and those summer months are going to be the bulk of Texas A&M landing a bunch of recruits. But, hey, I wouldn't mind a run of some recruits right now. It would be great. So I like Rink as a player. Uh, let me know y'all's thoughts in the YouTube comments. What do we think about Rink? Um, how early is he going to play into his career? What do we like about his tape? Let me know those things. I really like the film. Um, everybody go check it out over on 24 7 Wars on Huddle, wherever. But um, it's great tape. He's going to be a really, really good football player at Texas A&M. So this is a great opportunity to recap 
who's currently committed to Texas A&M's 2025 class. We'll talk about that, some of the players, and where recruiting is heading. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Yeah, I'm telling you, ton of great stuff to bet on right now. We're in that fun part of sports where before, you know, um, college basketball ends and then you kind of get to that dead period and you're just crossing your fingers waiting for football to be back. I know that some of us here are um, baseball fans like myself and – you know, this time's okay. But for some, hey, waiting on football, I get it. So it's a good opportunity to go check out FanDuel. Once again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. So you currently have four other players committed in the 2025 class to, along with rank. So the first is DeAndre uh, Ryden, the running back, I mean, just a kid. I, I can't express how excited I am about him as a player. The tape, the physicality, the speed. He's he's a he's the perfect mix of running back. You know, a lot of times, kind of like how we just got done talking about with uh, with Rank and his multiple pass rush moves. That's the sign of a good defensive lineman. A lot of running backs. Hey, this guy's really fast. This guy's really shifty. This guy's really strong. You know, it's not often you see a guy that has a mix of everything and. And uh, Ryden has that, so I'm really excited to see what he does at Texas A&M, knowing that the Aggies didn't take a um, uh, running back in the recruiting class last year. I expect to see Ryden on the field early and into early into his career, and I think he's going to be a great Texas A&M running back. So I'm excited about him. A uh, four star, five ten, the buck ninety five, ranked two hundred thirty eighth in the tw- in the twenty four seven Sports Composite rankings. High upside on this kid. He's going to be a special player. I'm really excited to see how he uh, pans out. Then you got John uh, Petaway and the four star corner. I really like Petaway's uh, tape. I think he's a player, 5'10, a buck 75. He's a dude who's going to come in and play early. I like the instincts, I like his ability to play the position um, at a high level. I think he's a guy who is he going to come in and play right away? I'm not so sure about that, but I do think he's going to be a star when it is officially his time and he's developed and he's ready to rock and roll. So another player that I am really excited about. Then you've got the four-star linebacker, Kelvion Riggins, uh, 5'11 and a half. Once again, I always have to say it, just say six foot. Just say 5'11, pick one. Go one, go up or down. I always say go up. Uh, 205 pounds. He's ranked 236th in the composite rankings. This dude's a thumper. Going to be a really good linebacker. If he can get up to like, you know, when he's when he's college ready, you assume he'll be up to like 220 at that six-foot frame, maybe 5'10", or, uh, or uh, 210, 215, whatever. He's going to be a, a dominant force in the linebacker room. So I'm I'm really excited to see what he is, um, is able to do. I love the film on him. Um, and, and I just think Texas A&M has done a really – good job of recruiting at the uh at the linebacker position over these last few years. I just think he's going to be a guy. He's going to be next in line of these talented 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 uh linebackers. So I'm excited to see what he's able to do. Once again, four star, 236th in the class, going to be a great player. And then the last one is a bit of the wild card and that is the three-star interior offensive lineman Joshua Moses, a uh, first to commit in this class. 6'3", 315, got a great size to him to be an interior offensive lineman. And, you know, ranked uh, 763rd in the recruiting class. And I think a lot of folks are quick to say, oh, well, look at that ranking. He's a project. And sure, yeah, I, you call him a project. You can do that. Um, that's, you know, uh, not, not a super high-ranked guy. But I'll tell you this. I, I like the film. And 
But what I like most about him is that he's an offensive lineman. And some might say, well, Andrew, what, what do you mean? What do you mean he's an offensive lineman? Well, here's my opinion on offensive linemen. I believe that offensive linemen, it, it's about the, the details. It's about what you got inside you. I think sometimes we are quick to, you know, look at stars and look at rankings and go, who cares? When I look at a player like Moses, uh, uh, a offensive lineman who has the size to compete at the next level, there's no debate to that. I think what stands out to me is remembering this kid can develop. Offensive line is one of those positions where you – I don't think stars matter. I really don't. And, and and some might be in the camp that stars shouldn't matter ever. If that's you, I'm cool with that. But watching um, the film on this kid and just seeing different things like that, I, I, this kid can develop. He's got the size. He's got everything you need. Sometimes you need to develop. And I, I think that as fans – we get we're too quick to go. Oh well, look at the stars. He's a three star. That stuff doesn't matter. How many times do you watch the NFL draft and oh, of the first round draft picks, there was seventeen former three stars or worse, like this, you know, stuff like that. Stars don't always matter. Now, are the hit rate on five stars higher than three stars? Yeah, of course, that's the reality here. But at the end of the day, players like Moses can develop into really good football players. So I'm excited about him just because he's an offensive lineman with great size who I think can play at some point during his Texas A&M career if he continues to develop. And the coaching staff, Coach Cushing, helps him develop. And I really like that about him. So um, not someone who's you know being discussed a- a- as much as a player like Rink or Ryden or Petaway or Riggins. Still a solid football player that can help this Texas A&M team at some point during his career. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, this uh, class, all five players are from Texas. I believe it's ranked 22nd. That's the only thing I didn't write down, which was silly. Um, 22nd overall, and I don't care about that right now because this is getting ready to take off like a wildfire. Texas A&M has a ton of talented players in every single day. Every single day, it seems like there's a five-star this, a four-star this on campus recruiting is getting ready to take off. I've got a really good feeling about that. And it was the same thing last year. One of the first shows I did when I took over the show, um, I believe it was in May, I was making the case for, hey, should we be panicking? You know, Texas A&M, it's, um, it's mid-May, and Texas A&M only has uh, seven commits, whatever it was. And I was saying, no, you shouldn't be panicking because a lot of this is going to happen in the summer. That is the reality of high school recruiting. A lot of this is going to happen in the summer. I don't care where we are right now because I have a pretty good feeling about where we're going to be in three months. And where that's going to be is a top 15, potentially top 10 class. You feel pretty good about that. A lot of talent that's excited about what Coach Elko is building. I think you're going to get a really good quarterback in this class. I think you're going to get some offensive linemen, defensive linemen. You're going to get some receivers. You're going to stack this class up, and it's going to be a talented, talented crew that this coaching staff is going to help develop into stars at Texas A&M. So that's where the recruiting class sits right now. Um, let me know in the comments, is there a player that's uh, Texas A&M is currently recruiting that you're really excited about, you really hope we land? Let me know that in the comments. A lot of fun recruiting conversations to be had with those important summer months, uh, important summer days for recruiting coming up here soon. We heard from Coach Elko from Coach Bateman, we heard from Connor Wigman, we heard from DJ Hicks after a recent spring practice. We're going to talk about some of those quotes and some different things coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that can plug into your existing TV and provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply 
of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you really, really should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. So we heard from some of the coaching staff, some of the players after spring practice, uh, recent spring practice uh, earlier today. And I want to run through some of these quotes. I got a lot of good ones. Um, this will have some of these discussions tomorrow as well. Um, but I want to start with hearing some, some things you heard from Coach Colin Klein. One quote, he says, this is about implementing a new offense. He says, it's a lot. We're being aggressive with it right from the jump, but we're making sure we don't go too hard, too fast, while making sure we're being fundamentally sound. I like this quote because I think it kind of, it makes you sit and look at this and go, this coaching staff is doing a really good job of implementing this new plan and implementing the system. You don't want to do it too fast. You don't want to do it like that because it's really hard to pick up on these things. I mean, everybody that's played football knows what it's like learning an offense. It's not easy to do. So you want to take it slow. You want to be able to learn. You know these players are glued to these playbooks and getting ready to rock and roll. Um, But I love hearing that. Coach Klein went on to talk about Connor Wigman. And he said, I've been really impressed with his grit. He's a very instinctual football player. He has a great feel for space and a great feel for concepts. It has been fun getting to know him and getting to know each other through this process. I just think Colin Klein and Connor Wigman are going to be like <clears throat> an all-time Texas A&M one-two punch. Just, I, I think you're going to see them do something really special. I think this offense is going to be really special, and I am incredibly excited to see what happens. Um, so Coach Klein was then asked about Wigman's availability with the injury, to which he responded, um, he's trying to do as much as possible. We're all trying to do as much as possible to accelerate that growth curve. Every day matters. Every rep matters. We're maximizing everything that we get. Um, you know, not a ton of – insight there from coach Klein, but I will tell you this, having watched those videos of Connor Wigman throwing the football the other day, he looks really, really good throwing the ball. He looks comfortable. He doesn't look like he's in any kind of pain, which I think is a really good thing. You don't want to see him grimacing after throws and stuff like that. So it's good to see that he's feeling, you know, a little bit better. I do think he's a little bit based on some, some things coach Elko said a few weeks ago, and having watched Wigman throw at practice, I, I think that you know, uh, I think that I feel much better about his status than I did a few weeks ago, which is a good thing. Um. So Coach Klein had this to say about the running back room. He said, in college football and at a high level, and in this league, it's going to be. Let me read that again. Sometime, oof. In college football and at a high level, and in this league. It's going to take a stable. These days of having one true back are not there anymore, or the days of having one true back are not there anymore. It's going to be a shared load. All three guys have done a really, really good job this spring and shown flashes of some really good things. So, you know, you're going to have a lot of running backs playing reps. I'm excited to see how all of these guys look at spring practice. I think that's going to be very telling. I think we're going to learn a lot about this roster going forward and learn a lot about where this team stands and from the spring game. But I think that running back position, you're going to really see who separates himself, who looks good. Now, as Coach Klein said, you're going to see multiple players mix in and out, and we're going to get to learn about this running back room as a whole. But I do think you're going to see, wow, it's going to be a shared backfield and lots of guys are going to get reps all throughout the season and in the spring 
it's going to be interesting to see who separates themselves in these next few practices. So I'm excited to see that. Um, another quote about Connor Wigman from Colin Klein. He says, Connor loves to compete. He loves to compete. As we get into more situational football and those situations become more competitive, you can see that excitement and smile. The ability to cut it loose has been good to see. Connor Wigman wants to be out there playing football. I mean, that's very evident. You know, he talked about it. We'll, we'll, we'll um, read some of that, those quotes tomorrow and, and hear from um, and talk about some quotes from Coach Bateman tomorrow, but on tomorrow's show or on. Uh, but it's just, it, it's funny hearing from Connor Wigman. He, I mean, he just missed football. He wanted back so bad. I think he's really excited to be out there. Just every time I hear that young man speak, I just feel better and better about how good of a season he's going to have this year. I just, I really do. Every day goes by, I'm more and more convinced he's getting ready to take the SEC by storm. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really, really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It helps the show a ton. Hope everybody has a great rest of their day today, and we will see you tomorrow.